King of Podcasts Radio Network proudly presents the Wrestling Is Real Podcast because wrestling needs us. Wrestling Is Real Podcast is on. Thanks for being here. Appreciate all of you uh, checking in. We're going to talk about Fastlane tonight. And I'll at least say this, that I was partially distracted because I had an issue where I got scammed today. And as an Uber driver, I do uh, Uber driving part-time. And what happened was, I got caught up in something where, long story short, some people might actually go and look online, they might learn about this. There's a thing where an Uber driver gets a pickup, and you go to the address, you know, pick up the passenger. Well, this happened, but then that particular pickup I got a call as I was uh, stopping to go ahead and get the pickup nobody was there but then they tried to tell me that I had received the $500 bonus for all my work in customer service that, that I guess I received uh, some kind of extra bonus for the customer service that I've done for Uber and they went through this whole kind of thing with me which I was just completely sidetracked I was not even thinking about what they were doing that they were asking for my information on the Uber app to try to go ahead and deposit the, the, the deposit of money. I'm like an idiot, I did. Among other things. So that led to a couple of other things happening where some fraud happened. Can't access my account right now for Uber, so I'm trying to get that squared away. Plus some other stuff that happened to do with the bank. Doesn't help. I'm going through all the security stuff right now, changing passwords. So that's part of what I'm dealing with as I go ahead and record tonight, watching fast lane now tonight's show was kind of like what they were doing it's almost like correcting what they want to try to do in terms of what they want to do with the wrestlemania card coming up in three weeks is it looking good probably not but again they're trying to set something up i'm not necessarily so excited about what they've done with wrestlemania this year i know a lot of people are going to go into very much detail but i'll wait till wednesday to talk about it i can do that wrestlemania 37 we'll talk about it We'll see what they're going to do with Raw and SmackDown leading up to it and wait. Meantime, we already have four matches that are scheduled for that night. Well, four matches that will be scheduled over two nights, April 10th and 11th. That's Roman Reigns versus Edge for the Universal Championship, which has now been kind of set up because Daniel Bryan did not beat Roman Reigns tonight. Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. Now you have the feuding spirit between them set up after so much time. For the SmackDown Women's title. And then Bobby Lashley will take on Drew McIntyre. Which that is now set up because Drew McIntyre beat Sheamus. And New Day versus AJ Styles and Omos. Which were not featured tonight on Fastlane. But what was on Fastlane wasn't really special. Post-show, be pre-show match. Riddle over Mustafa Ali for the US title. Again, just didn't matter. Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler. With the help of Reginald, beat Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair for the women's tag team titles. Listen, for me, this match, the fusion, or excuse me, the friction between Sasha and Bianca created that with the whole help with Reginald. And then the things that were happening with Sasha, excuse me, with uh, Shayna and Nia to be able to create that friction. So they made a little thing to finally get to that point. I haven't cared about this tag team kind of thing at all. This was bad. And then Sasha and Bianca finally getting themselves at each other right now. This should have been done way before. Look, we can go ahead and complain all we want about what they could have done better, but they didn't. And again, this is just predictable. We know we're going to have the match. It's already set. And the way they build it up, again, this company just continues the flaw. It's not even that hard to get Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair set up as a match. But they are capable of doing it. Capable of making mistakes on this this night once again. A big key over Paul Cruz for the Intercontinental title, which was fine. And honestly, the big key Apollo Cruz match, that was just a blip on the radar. Five minutes, just like that. And big E wins. Again, I don't even know where they did the setup for the match at all and why Apollo Crews is going to just drop the Big E so quick. But again, obviously, they're making it where Big E is a strong IC champ. They're definitely going to build him up down the line for Roman Reigns. Looks like what they're going to do. So Big E is becoming much more serious, not so laughable. And His New Day mystique is starting to get pulled off of him. 
and Biggie's becoming much more serious. And really, they're trying to take him all together into to, to a different character. They are trying to transition him out into something else different altogether. So they put this match together. So we were supposed to get Shane McMahon against Braun Strowman. They throw the injury thing that Shane, they showed actual video of him getting injured during, uh, as he was getting prepared, warming up. And then he has, what, an ankle injury, I guess? So he's out there with a crutch. Elias comes out for a segment. And then Shane just says, hey, buddy, you're going to take on Braun Strowman for me. You're my replacement tonight. So they put a little something together. It sucked. But, I mean, I get what the intention is. I see what they're trying to do with Shane. I see what they wanted to do with this match. Again, Shane, the, Braun won't be able to get his hands on Shane yet. Braun's already gotten screwed over several times. They're going to continue doing that leading up to the match. Just don't care about this match at all. I don't think anyone does. I mean, I don't care what Shane does this time around to get up on some other monstrosity and do some death-defying feat over Braun Strowman. I just don't care anymore. But again, Shane has to be on the card. For some reason, they think Shane is important to be on the card. Well, I mean, maybe sometimes it's good to have that kind of thing happen. But again, I just don't care. Just don't care. Seth Rollins over Shinsuke Nakamura. They give a lot of time for this match. Good match, right? Good for the work rate. For Seth Rollins, dealing with Cesaro, again, I'm not caring for Seth Rollins. There's been no change to his characters as he came back. And he's just lost. Like, it's a lost character to me. It's just, okay, embrace the vision. Slight tweak to what the uh, evangelist type character he was before wearing white. Now he's wearing black again. Doesn't mean he doesn't work well. Doesn't mean he doesn't cut the promos as best as he can with the material he has. But again, it's all these people with the material they have. It sucks. All of it. So, the newsworthy stuff of the last three matches. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus, great package to lead in to build on their history. Why they did never, they never decided to go and pick on this now. Well, they never do. They're never going to go and show you the back end of the story and kind of really just take us all the way to this now. They could have just used clips to build up over a couple of weeks, but they're not going to do that. Again, we're asking for too much. This company does not want to play out a storyboard and consistently just put out stories like that. No, they'd rather just do everything in the ring and just piecemeal it and just incorporate whoever's going to be in a match together. They're going to be incorporated together in the ring or outside the ring, but they're always going to be together and they're always going to be confronting each other each and every week with no heat whatsoever. So Drew McIntyre gets this. He gets the win over Sheamus. No holds barred match. Very good match. They did a lot with each other, and they destroyed each other. Like, I mean, tell you, they, they made it tough. Drew McIntyre coming out as William Wallace. Okay. Is that going to be a new thing? I don't know, but that's obviously where they're going with Drew McIntyre. And you know what? Drew McIntyre is happy just to be in the main event spot. And so if they're going to dress him up like William Wallace, fine. They will take our freedom. Right? So that match was fine. Then Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton, and just to see Randy Orton getting ready to do the pose up on the top of the corner rope, and he's already spinning black blood, whatever the crap he's spinning out. <laughs> I don't know, prune juice or something. And then Alexa Bliss is able to go ahead and make light tresses fall to the floor. And she was able to go ahead and, you know, now she has powers to go ahead and move things and to throw things at Randy Orton. Pretty funny. So the big moves they had where they had uh, Sheamus thrown off of something with a, the sparklers and all, that looked pretty good. But overall, good match, horrible feud. Horribly built feud. As we know, the matches weren't going to be bad, but it's so watered down because of the lack of effort to build the shows in between pay-per-views, and especially building up the WrestleMania season. For instance, a comment I sent to Blake Ostreicher when he was writing up on Twitter today. I said, and this is what happens here. I'm going to just take from what he told me, what he said first. He said that the best built WrestleMania rivalry, Brian versus Reigns, isn't even a WrestleMania feud, feud, excuse me. And then he ranked the builds of all the rivalries for this time around. And I said, quote, 
when WWE doesn't work on building feuds and creating heat on characters or need WrestleMania offseason, this is what happens. They don't even consider reheating feuds at the least to start back up that worked before. You set up Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. You could have built up to this match. But this company, the creative they have right now, they do not want to build out three to four months. They can't. They, they don't want to go and give you the predictable. Really, you could just predictably give us six months of build and give us the matches. I think people would be better off if you did instead of swerving the fans left and right, trying to keep them on their toes as to what's happening. Right now, this company is incapable of giving us anything surprising. There is no heat. There are no surprises they can give. There's nothing they can do right now to surprise, shock, and awe us. Now, they did give us at the end of the Roman Reigns-Daniel Bryan match. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I was talking about Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton before I got distracted again. Tangents here, Ken. It's just all over the place. Now, with Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton, the only thing that matters in this is the fact that Bray Wyatt came back. Bray Wyatt's back. He's now looking like a more ghoulish character after he got burned. And Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt will be starting up again, I guess. After Alexa Bliss tried to go and kill him, then Bray Wyatt all of a sudden comes back out. And once again, we just don't care about this return of Bray Wyatt. We don't care about all the gimmicks they're doing around this. But they're spending a lot of time on it. But they're spending time on something that's not working well and not getting over with the crowd. What has? And that's what they continue to do. Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, 30-minute match. Excellent. Very well done. And Daniel Bryan looking really strong. Had the uh, yes lock locked in. And then they had the issues at the end. Got a dusty finish with the ref getting bumped. And then Edge, when seeing both Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan down, turns on both, and Roman Reigns gets the victory. So yeah, Edge is now a heel, going up against a heel at the main event of WrestleMania. But that tells me that Edge will not just be going on against Roman Reigns. That means probably that Ro- Daniel Bryan is going to still be included. I'm guessing the match is going to be a three-way. They don't want to do Edge, Roman Reigns, because they everybody feels Edge is the part-timer, and they're not going to just put the belt on him. And I'm, that's probably the best bet they can do. It makes sense somehow, but it doesn't mean it's good. I mean, it's going to be a good match. But again, to expect a build for all this, I mean, I expect AEW doing better builds. And that's the problem is that AEW does a better job of building up to matches. Like, look at the build they did. Again, compare any of the feuds we have right now in WWE compared to what they did with the build of MGF joining the inner circle all the way up to the introduction of the pinnacle. Really? Think about that. The build of uh, Kenny Omega and building this heel character that he has now and all the things that were going on with that. Again, they're building months and months in advance. And again, we're going to get inner circle and pinnacle. And, uh, and this is, again, inner circle pinnacle will be TV that will be watchable. And when NXT moves over in a month, that's going to be a lot of issues. Again, WWE needs to figure things out. They 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 are running out of time with screwing up and continuing the, to decline. Not just because of what they're doing, because of course it's a continue to decline from cable. But what they're doing now, more than anything else, is they are going to open themselves up for an AEW to possibly make some traction again, pick up some more ground than they already have because they will have Wednesdays to themselves, most likely. All the signs are pointing to it. And they continue to make these mistakes. And then what happens after WrestleMania? Again, what are you going to do here to, to really say, I know mean, you got to save the show. So there's obviously changes being made. And again, this company had to do last minute changes and scrambling to get the WrestleMania. Scrambling for the ticket sales, scrambling to get the events ready to go. We got four matches announced, but we don't even have anything as a clue as what's being built in terms of what night's going to have what. We don't even have a clue of that. And the fans are now starting to buy tickets. What are you going to do next? There's a lot of questions to be answered. We'll give them some time. But again, 
tonight, I didn't expect more than them saying, okay, we're going to just, you know, tie up a few loose ends of what we can. So what they did give us is, okay, so Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, we now are setting up the heat for that match in three weeks, which is one of the main event matches. And then Big E, once again, being solidified IC champion, definitely will be being uh, courted, being proper, uh, it's being primed for a title run against Roman Reigns sometime after WrestleMania, I would imagine. The Braun Strowman Shin McMahon match is going to be coming up. It's going to suck. I don't know. Maybe they'll do something that's going to be something really special. But again, this is not to get Braun Strowman over. The Braun Strowman doesn't matter. This is just for Shane. It's got to be that. Shane's got to have his match. I guess that's what it is. And then Seth Rollins Cesaro and not even Cesaro involved, not even being seen tonight. Don't know how that helps too much. But again, I know. I get what they're trying to do. Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, a good match. But again, you could have had this match during the offseason or any other time. But and, and again, they never even took he, Sheamus never even got a chance to go after him for the title, I think. Right? Did Sheamus even get a title shot? I don't think so. But Sheamus looked good tonight. And again, both of them looked good tonight. So it was a good match. Seth Rollins just getting out of was a good match. Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, very good match. And then we now know that most likely Bray Wyatt, Brandy Orton, they're going to continue. That's actually the one mat, the one feud that's gone the longest. But again, they're so badly performed. Not badly performed. Badly programmed, badly constructed, badly storyboarded, badly scripted. All of them. And even the Daniel Bryan thing right now, to include him into the picture so late into the dance, when you already had Edge and Roman Reigns pretty much ready to go and lock on each other after Roman Reigns, after Edge wins the Royal Rumble, we kind of figured that was all going to be happening. And again, they stretched out Edge's decision. Then Daniel Bryan, all of a sudden, they need to go ahead and add him into the mix because they need to get something else into the mix to make that better. And that will still not be enough for Vince McMahon to make the show feel like it, what it, where it wants to be, where he wants it to be. So it's a big old mess. There you go. All right. I'm going to leave it there. I got much more to say. I'll just wait till Wednesday. And I also didn't get a chance to watch the NWA back for the attack pay-per-view. We'll talk about that. Hopefully on Wednesday I'll get a chance to catch that. And then I'll also get this crap with the uh, scammer I had to deal with today. I'll get that off my mind and get that taken care of. Anyway, we'll come back this Wednesday going on Thursday for the Wrestling Control Podcast. Because wrestling needs us. Thank you for listening to the Wrestling Is Real podcast. You can find all previous episodes at WrestlingIsReal.com or subscribe to the show on all major podcast outlets, including Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Follow the King of Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at King of Podcasts and search King of Podcasts on YouTube or type youtube.com slash jbrasco951. This has been a presentation of the King of Podcasts Radio Network.